Something seems a bit off with your horse. They're having difficulty getting up and down or experiencing discomfort when saddled. Your horse could be in need of chiropractic treatment. We take this episode on the road to Farmer City to speak with Dr. Katherine Foreman Hesterberg. She's part of the rehabilitation services at the U of I Veterinary Teaching Hospital and certified in animal chiropractic. Stay with us for this episode of The Paw Report. Fetcher's Pet Supply on the north side of the Charleston Square, serving the EIU community since 1991. Fetcher's welcomes all pets on a leash, is open seven days a week, and offers made in the USA food. Pet supplies for dogs, cats, reptiles, and fish. Fetcher's Pet Supply in Charleston. The Paw Report on WEIU is supported by Rural King, America's farm and home store, livestock feed, farm equipment, pet supplies, and more. You can find your store and more information regarding Rural King at RuralKing.com. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Power Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Paw Report. As you can see, we're not in the studio today. We have taken the production on the road to Midwest Equine here in Farmer City, Illinois. So thank you for joining us. And we're joined by a special guest, first timer to the show today, Dr. Katherine Foreman. So thank you so much for joining us and inviting us to your office on a very busy day <laughs> yeah. at the end of July when it's very hot outside. Mm -hmm. So thank well, you again. You are very me. welcome. Uh, I always put our first time guests on the spot. We like to know a little bit about you and doing my homework I discovered that you uh, have a love of horses like none other and you've been riding horses since you were very little. I have, yep. Uh, my mom's a horse trainer and my dad's an equine veterinarian as well so I was going to work with horses one way or another at some point <laughs> in my life but yeah I, I've probably been on a horse since before I could walk. My pictures have a, my pictures, my parents have a picture of me with a bottle in my mouth sitting on a pony um, so I've been competing since I was a young kid. I've competed internationally. Uh, and then I decided I really wanted to do what my dad did with his career. He saved my sick ponies when I was little and I wanted to grow up and do that too. So I, I attended Augustana College in the Quad Cities for undergrad and majored in biology. Uh, and then I attended the University of Illinois for veterinary school. And then I did a one year internship in Aiken, South Carolina at a busy equine hospital down there and got a lot of extra training and worked on a lot of sport horses while down there. And then I've worked in central Indiana for a few years and I've been back here in the central Illinois area, which is home for me for about two years. Your specialization is equine chiropractic, among other things. So uh, let's talk about what is equine chiropractic. It's not something that is at least not something that I hear of a lot. Sure. So it's uh, the best really basic definition, scientific definition is that it's uh, high velocity, low force adjustments through the joints of animals, specifically horses. Uh, I work on horses as well as livestock and dogs and cats, but typically my typical patient is a performance horse. Um, so it's essentially uh, ensuring that the every joint within the spinal canal and within their limbs have appropriate mobility through it. Are you one of a few around here? I mean, as, as I mentioned, we're at Midwest Equine, maybe back up a little bit. Um, tell us about the practice here. It is affiliated with the University Correct. of Illinois. Correct. Yep, so we're uh, basically a satellite clinic of the University of Illinois. They have the main teaching hospital there in Urbana, in South Urbana. Um, so they see all sorts of species there. They have a spe equine specific medicines and surgery service. And then we're the primary care service. Uh, so we, we do primary care work as well as lameness work. And then me specifically, I work on lameness horse, horses with lameness issues and chiropractic is usually tied into lameness issues. Um, how is the equine chiropractic care used? Um, and, and the lot is full here of people, so um, obviously it's, it's used quite a bit, but specifically. Yep, so my typical patient is a performance animal, meaning that they're, uh, they're a horse that competes for a living. They're a barrel horse, they're a jumping horse, they're 
um, a racehorse, that type of thing, where they're exerting their body, just like we have human athletes, you know, they're athletes as well, so we treat them appropriately, just how human athletes are treated. We treat them for any soreness issues or anything like that, and chiropractic is a very good tool in our toolbox to be able to keep performance horses at the, at the top of their level. And is it a, as I mentioned, you're specialized. Is that who should be treating these types of horses? Yes. I mean, is, there, is it a specialization that people have to go through? Yes, it is. So within the state of Illinois, um, the actual Veterinary Practice Act states that only veterinarians and human chiropractors, so DVMs or DCs that have been through an animal chiropractic certification program legally are allowed to work on horses and do and do chiropractic adjustments on horses and other species. And where did you say you did that? I know you mentioned that briefly at the beginning. Yep, so I did that in a school called Options for Animals in Wellsville, Kansas. So it's a, it's a, about a five month long program and I've, I completed that about three years ago. If I was a horse owner, how would I know if you know, how would I know if my horse is in pain or would benefit from chiropractic services? Sure, so the number one complaint I get is just decreased performance, meaning they're not running as fast as they used to, they don't feel comfortable under tack anymore, they're having some sort of abnormal behavior under tack, um, and horse owners know their horse is the best versus I come and I'm, I'm very objective and can assess their physical condition, but behavior is usually a big key for a lot of horse, horse owners, that they're not turning around the barrel appropriately, they're stopping at the jumps or they're not jumping as well or they're not running as fast anymore. Um, and sometimes uh, chiropractic work is tied into there being a primary limb issue and then secondarily their back takes the brunt of the, of the primary limb soreness. What perf other performance issues um, is it getting up, getting down? Is it um, maybe the way that they walk? Maybe they're carrying themselves a little bit longer I, or a little odd. I know that there's a laundry list mm -hmm. of different things that that maybe you look for too. Yeah, so when I watch an animal move, I watch them usually at the walk and then at the trot in a straight line and on a circle. So yes, it's definitely how they carry themselves, how they move each leg individually, whether there is an asymmetry in their pelvis or in their shoulders or their neck. Um, uh, and then also if there's an actual limp in their gait, if there's a limp in their gait, then we approach it more from the lameness aspect and then chiropractic can help secondarily. But primary chiropractic is that there's some sort of asymmetry in their spine, neck or pelvis um, and in the performance horses, like I said, it's usually a behavioral thing that the owner notice under tack first. But I have a lot of geriatric horses that I work on as well that just kind of in day to day life, they're maybe getting up from laying down a little bit slower or they're moving around the pasture a little bit slower and the owner notices and chiropractic can benefit that too. Can it be as subtle as, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a horse owner, I've been a, a dog owner. Can it be something as subtle as diet, not eating, not drinking, maybe losing a little bit of weight? I mean, could that all play into a problem? It can. Um, in my honest opinion, usually chiropractic care is beneficial in those situations, but there's typically a primary issue leading into those, those types of signs. It's usually not a primary chiropractic issue. Chiropractic can help secondarily. There's typically mm -hmm. another issue going on, but chiropractic can help in any any way, form, shape, size of any animal at any time in their life. But a lot of times there's a primary issue that needs treated appropriately first and then chiropractic can be a secondary care. I, I just happen, I wonder if you come across people in your discussions, did they even know that there was such a service that, that they could provide to their animal? Do you get that a lot? Yeah. Like, what? I thought that was only for humans. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, some, some friends and family definitely, when they learned that what I was doing, they they kind of looked at me a little funny when yeah, I first exactly. said I was, I was in, uh, getting certified in animal chiropractic. Um, but it's just like humans, again, especially the performance animals. We have human athletes, we have horse athletes, we have dog athletes, we have, you know, even livestock. I do adjust a lot of um, 4-H animals that go to the state fair. Like I do at this time of year, I, I end up adjusting a lot of pigs and cows before they go to the state fair because they walk in the ring and they stand more comfortably and appropriately in front of the judge. How can you tell... Um maybe a more subtle problem, like if there's just a subtle, maybe back problem that the animal is having. From an owner's perspective? Yes. Um, would be, again, in, in, I guess in, in, my, um, in my experience, it's, it's mostly a performance issue, um, but it can be subtle things as far as just them walking around the pasture. If you notice some sort of 
hitch in their giddy up, I guess to say, you know, in layman's <laughs> there terms. There is a song that about that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that they're just walking a little slower or maybe unevenly, you know, or they're not coming up, especially if they live out in the pasture and you're bringing them in during during the hot day, you know, mm-hmm. um, that they're not coming up to the gate as quick as they normally do. Some very subtle things like that. And like I said, you know, animal owners know their animals much better than I do. So if it's something really subtle like that, I, I definitely take that to heart and um, and do my best to under, try to understand what the owner's seeing at home versus and how I can use that information into my exam. Absolutely. As I mentioned, we're filming, this will air in the fall, we're filming the end of July. Um, I'm just seeing probably half a dozen horses here uh, ready to see you. Um, What can the horse owners expect at a chiropractic appointment? Um, You know, maybe take us through the process from start to finish, you get the call appointments are made, what what can you expect? Yeah, so usually I want to see them at least walk back and forth. I, I watch them walk from the side, I watch them walk from behind just to see how their pelvis is moving, how they move their neck and their back is just as they move. Um, and then I do a static exam where I kind of just run my hands down their neck, down their back, around their pelvis, um, feel down their legs. I look for anything really overt like swelling, heat, you know, at palpable muscle soreness or anything like that. Um, and then I usually start my adjustment from the pelvis and work my way towards the head. And I actually, for horses specifically, I have a big foam block that's about yay big that I turn on inside and I stand on. So I actually adjust from on top of the horse and work from the pelvis up to the withers, which is where the neck meets the meets the chest. Um, I get off the block, I adjust the neck from side to side, and then I adjust their limbs. I would have to believe and, and maybe you can talk more about adjustments in, in detail. You've got to be very strong and very, I mean, this is an animal that's 10 times your size, if not more. Um, how do you give it enough pressure, you know, exactly what to do um, to, to relieve that animal, to help that animal? Sure, and that, so that's why, you know, I hone in on that, that only people going through, only veterinarians and human chiropractors that have gone through a certification course should be the ones adjusting animals because it's a very specific technique. Um, it's about, you have to know their anatomy very, very well. It's, I'm not just pressing on random areas when I do it. I'm finding the correct uh, joint and then applying pressure to that joint. And like I said earlier, it's a high velocity, low force. So I'm actually not pushing that hard, but I'm pushing very quickly to make a very quick adjustment. And it's over, you have to do it over the specific area. Otherwise you're just kind of pushing on their back and not really solving solving any issue necessarily. Um, so it is definitely a very learned, very technical skill. Do you notice that there are certain parts of the horse that usually get them or you see the most problems is it spine is it legs is it back is it I mean limbs what what area do you you normally see I guess it would depend on the performance of the mm-hmm. animal that you're seeing. Yeah, yeah, so it does depend on what they do for a living um, and then depend on their previous history too. Like do they have arthritis in other joints? So I have to be careful about uh, adjusting some areas that may have some arthritis just because it'll be a little more painful or a little stiffer for me to adjust those areas. But typically, most often I see areas in their lumbar spine, so the section right in front of their pelvis and the base of their neck, their, their caudal cervical vertebrae is where they typically need the most adjustments. And that's just from what we call activities of daily living. It's just like us, that most people that go to a human chiropractor need their neck and their lower back adjusted. I know you said you're born and raised around horses. Does it ever, do you ever get nervous, uh, a little tense? Uh, Maybe if it's an animal you've never met before, are you a little nervous that they might do one of these or lift up one of those back legs and, and get you? Do you ever, does that ever go through your mind when you're going through an exam? It does. Um, And I've, you know, like to think I have a pretty good, what, what you would call a horse sense, being around horses most of my life, that I can kind of tell when a horse is anxious or nervous and, and maybe a little bit more reactive to what I'm trying to do. Um, in those situations, I just take my time, try to get the horse to feel like they can trust me, that they understand I'm not gonna hurt them, mm-hmm. I'm trying to help them. Um, but I definitely have had occasions where I've actually been standing on the block and had the horse kick the block out from underneath me. And I was fine, thankfully I've never been injured. Um, so I, I try really hard to never actually have to sedate an animal for an adjustment because you, it kind of takes away their natural reflex to push back on me and if they're sedated they they don't resist my pressure 
um, and you can end up injuring them if they if they don't have their natural ability to do that. So I try really hard to avoid sedation in, in animals at all costs, but there are some situations where the horse is, is borderline dangerous to be around from being so anxious and nervous, but we really need to get it adjusted, so I'll give it just a little bit of sedation um, and then get it adjusted safely because my safety is, is more important to me um, Absolutely. and also the safety of my handler holding the horse. So, so there are situations where I definitely have been a little more nervous to get the animal adjusted but if I take my time, we'll give it a little bit of sedative, then we can get it done. I've been to a human chiropractor, uh, so I know the repetition and what it takes. And, you know, uh, sometimes it's you go a few weeks, sometimes you go a few months, sometimes it's a lifetime commitment. Um, is it different for horses or cattle or other animals that you treat? So most of the performance horses I see, I like to see every four to six weeks during the show season, which is typically like March to November. Um, other horses that are, you know, more daily living geriatric type, type of animals I see every every other month or every three months. Um, and I do definitely have some people that call, this is kind of funny, around Christmas time and they say, I want to give my horse a chiropractic <laughs> adjustment for, as a Christmas present. And I said, Perfect that's gift. not going to hurt anything by any means, but to stay on a regular schedule is definitely more beneficial. Have you found, and I know that in speaking with you, most of your clients are horses, uh, but have you found that it's been very successful in other species. I mean, can can a cat, can a dog, I mean, yeah. I mean, can anybody that has a, or any species with the spine, I guess, it yeah, can help. Yeah, so any any species that has a spine can be adjusted. Um, I've not adjusted anything kind of out of the blue. Uh, one of my professors at the certification program said some of the weirdest animals she's done are like an iguana and a ferret and a rabbit, because they were actually all show animals that were going to the 4-H fair. Um, but there are plenty of people who just, if you love your animal and you notice something abnormal about it, it moving around its, its habitat, say it's a an iguana moving around in the house and it's acting abnormal, it could probably benefit from a chiropractic adjustment. Um, so outside of horses, I mostly work with cattle and pigs and then some dogs here and there. I do actually um, provide a service through the Small Animal Rehab Service at the at the teaching college, at the University of Illinois Veterinary Teaching College in in Urbana where I work through the small animal rehab service for some of the orthopedic patients. So say they've had an orthopedic surgery like a knee repair or something like that. They come in for rehab and I adjust them while they're there. Tell me about your first patient. <laughs> I have to, I'd have to believe that um, the whole time I'm, I'm talking to you about this and all these horses that, that are around us, that had, and I want to ask you about some other clients and stories, but I have to believe that that was maybe your most memorable. So honestly, my first patient was my own horse. <laughs> wow. He was kind okay. of my practice dummy, honestly, through the certification program. He and my dog both were uh, were very beneficial while I was going through the program. They were very patient and understanding while I was trying to <laughs> figure out how everything moved appropriately and that I was in the right spot and everything. So um, my horse, I, I grew up in the hunter-jumper world, so he was a jumper horse. Um, so he definitely benefited from it just from I, uh, the first time I did a full adjustment on him from tail to head and did all four legs. I got on him the next day and he felt like a brand new horse like he was just quiet and fluid in his movement and I could just tell as his rider and his owner that that definitely benefited him. Do you still have horses today? I do, yep. So I no longer have that horse, unfortunately. He was put to sleep last spring from a really bad colic episode. Um, but I have another horse I purchased last summer, um, and so I've taken him to several shows this spring and summer already, and I adjust him usually every six weeks. So along with your busy schedule here at Midwest Equine, you still find time to show? I do the best do that you, I can. How do, you, how do you work that in? <laughs> I uh, have a very supportive husband um, and a very supportive set of parents, and my mom is my trainer, so um, so we just kind of kind of fit it in when we can. So you mentioned with your own horse, um, kind of your first patient um, doing some therapy work on, on your horse, and you personally saw the benefits. Um, what if, if somebody out there is on the fence, they're just not sure, they're not sure if this is something that maybe they should, should invest in or look into. Um, thinking back to some of your other clients, other benefits that, that you have personally witnessed with with those that you've treated? Um, so in that case, kind of put performance horses to the side because we definitely treat the musculoskeletal system when I do an adjustment and can in increase and, and, um, and 
help them to perform to the best of their ability, but take the geriatric horse or dog. Those are, those are the best example for a question like that is that just kind of their daily life is a little bit harder now. They're older, they have arthritis in multiple joints. Uh, it's harder for them to get up and down from the couch for a dog. Um, they're not moving around their pastures comfortably anymore. Uh, definitely from a mobility aspect, but then also just kind of from a behavior uh, personality aspect that I have had mm -hmm. some people say that in their in their geriatric dog specifically that they just have a little more spunk they're more active they want to play ball you know they, it's not like you throw the ball twice and they're done now they can do 10 15 times they want to go out on walks they're just more active and seem more full of life when if they're if they're on a regular adjustment schedule so hearing you it sounds like it might give them a little bit more longevity it um it definitely i don't want to you know sure guarantee that sure. necessarily but but i think i have personally seen geriatric animals have a better quality of life for maybe a little bit longer you've talked a lot about performance animals but but i'm i'm also hearing you correctly that you know your your therapy is not not exclusive to to them so if if somebody out there just has a horse that they love like a dog, I mean, they also could potentially qualify for for this type of therapy. Definitely, yeah. Uh, like I said, even if, they, if they're if they just a weekend warrior trail horse that you take them on a trail ride every once yeah. a month or every other month or they just hang out in your backyard, it's not a big deal. Every animal can benefit from chiropractic adjustments. Now, if, if I have a horse and I'm thinking that they need some attention, some adjustment, um, Take us through the process of that. Do you have to first start at the U of I? Do you call your office? Do you go to whoever vets your horses mm -hmm. to, to get the referral? And and I'm not asking for a specific dollar amount, but is it is it an expensive um, treatment for for people to to go through? Sure. So the for horses specifically, um, they'd schedule through our office here in Farmer City, and um, either the horses come here physically to the clinic as an outpatient appointment, or I do go to the farm um, and do adjustments as well. As long as there is a you know a safe flat area that I can stand on the block and adjust the horse safely, um, and it's to me re very reasonably pr priced in comparison to some other. Uh, other performance treatments, performance issues that we, we can treat, it's, it's very reasonably priced. Um, if you stay on a regular schedule, you know, that does add up over time. Every once in a while isn't, isn't as expensive. Um, so the, to me, the, the benefit outweighs the cost because mm -hmm. I've seen it work in my own animals. Um, but that is completely at the owner's discretion too. Right. Um, you mentioned, or I asked you earlier in this interview about um, I've just not heard a lot about um, equine chiropractor or chiro. I guess that's right, chiropractors. Um, in your studies and being in this world, are there a lot of you out there? There are more than you probably think. Um, in this area specifically, there are um, there are Central Illinois area. There are two veterinarians certified in, in chiropractic. Um, there's one veterinarian that's from near St. Louis that travels the Midwest and does a very, very good job. Um, and then there are what we would call a lay chiropractor. So they're not a veterinarian. They're not a human chiropractor, but they claim to perform mm -hmm. animal chiropractic. Um, and I don't think they ever actually injure the animal by any means, but in, again, according to the state of Illinois law, it needs to be a veterinarian or a human chiropractor. When you see clients, you've worked with them and you've helped them, but you also know that there may be other problems associated with their horse. Is that something you work with the, the owners with mm -hmm. as far as maybe referring them to a step beyond your treatment. Yeah, and the, so the benefit to me being a veterinarian and, and doing lameness work and uh, performance work as well as chiropractic is that a lot of times there's a primary limb issue. So there's a, they have arthritis in their knee or in their ankle or in their hocks. And if I can treat that, and I can, I can treat that either here at the clinic or on the farm and then treat their back as a secondary issue, I can mm. do that all myself. Um, there's also definitely instances where I come in as a, as a second 
treatment option that they've seen their primary veterinarian and had the, their hawks injected with corticosteroids, just like how human orthopedists will inject your shoulder with steroids. We can do the same thing for horses that we can put steroids into their joints to help their joints feel a little more comfortable. So that's helped, but not completely made everything go away. Then I can come in as a, as a second set of eyes and do an adjustment on them to help them feel their best. We got about a minute or two <laughs> left. Uh, it's hard to believe. Um, you mentioned your, your stories, and this is always the fun part of the interview. You mentioned uh, your first patients being your own horse, but I would have to believe in the years that you've been doing this, there's been some other cases that in, in dinner conversations you talk about, and I'm interested to hear those stories on some memorable patients. So one that really sticks out in my mind um, is a mammoth mule. So by that I mean a draft cross mule. So he's about, um, he stands about probably 18 hands or 18 one, meaning his, his withers where his neck meets his chest is above my head, standing still. Wow. Um, and he's just used as a trail horse, but he is the sweetest mule in the world. He's got the biggest personality. His head is about longer than my torso. Um, and he has really, really bad neck arthritis, very severe neck arthritis. And when he was purchased, he was actually purchased by a colleague of mine who was also a friend. Um, and so she asked me to come out and kind of evaluate him for that. We took some x-rays of his neck and he's been on a regular chiropractic schedule. So he is, has been seen every four weeks for probably about 13 or 14 months now. And he has significant more mobility in his neck. He's so much more comfortable under tack. He moves around the pasture comfortably. He gallops up to the gate, which he never did when she first bought him. So he definitely stands out in my mind from his personality and just his, his quality of life and his comfort improvement over the past year. It's pretty impressive. Excellent, and it puts a smile on your yeah. face. <laughs> well, our discussion has come to an end and probably good thing because you've got a parking lot full of horses here that need your assistance. So we so appreciate Dr. Foreman, you giving us a few minutes to talk about your craft and your specialty. And um, thank you for doing what you do because it's, it's definitely needed out there by a lot of people. So thank you for spending a few moments with the Paul Report. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. And until then, we'll join you next time. But for now, we're on the road at Farmer City here at Midwest Equine. Thanks for joining us. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Power Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. The Power Report on WEIU is supported by Rural King, America's farm and home store, livestock feed, farm equipment, pet supplies, and more. You can find your store and more information regarding Rural King at RuralKing.com. Fetcher's Pet Supply on the north side of the Charleston Square, serving the EIU community since 1991. Fetcher's welcomes all pets on a leash, is open seven days a week, and offers made in the USA food. Pet supplies for dogs, cats, reptiles, and fish. Fetcher's Pet Supply in Charleston.